Uncle Hans explains the origins of Chinese characters. Short history of the origins of Chinese characters. Traditional printed Chinese characters. Where do modern Chinese characters come from? Every part of every Chinese character is derived from a pictograph. How did they become those complicated characters you see today on your WeChat screen? Not all Chinese characters are important. The Kangxi Dictionary, Kangxi Zidian, has been a standard dictionary since 1716. It has over 47,000 characters. About 40,000 of those characters are so rare that the average modern Chinese will never see them in their lifetime. So one important step is to define a set of characters that will allow a person to read perhaps 99.9% .9 of all modern Chinese. First hurdle. For the last 60 years, in mainland China, they have used modern, simplified, printed characters, which I made a video about. The first big step in finding out where Chinese characters come from is to describe for each simplified character what traditional character it came from, by what authority and by what logic. This is a big step. Once we have done that, we have a set of traditional Chinese characters which have been used for the past couple of thousand years and we are kind of on our way to finding the origins. What exactly is a Chinese character? And what is a traditional Chinese character? You may say, oh, those are the characters they use in China. But a traditional Chinese character is a fuzzy set of characters that should allow you to read more than 99.99% .99 of texts from any period in the past 1800 years. Since about 200 AD, Chinese have been writing or printing characters in Kai style, Kai Shu, which are basically the forms of characters used today. Taiwan published a list of 4,808 characters called the Changyong Guozi Biaojun Ziti Biao. If you know all of those characters, you can recognize more than 99.9% .9 of modern Chinese. We could say that this is a very practical list, but no matter what kind of list we have, some people will find characters that are important to them that are not in the list. I later expanded this list to include 8,105 standard characters from the Tongyong Guifan Hanzibiao, or the Common Use Range Chinese Character List, which will put the explanations at well over 99.99% .99 level. You can stop at 99.9% .9 or you can go the extra 3,000 characters and get the extra 0.09%. I find several types of characters that need to be added to the list of important characters. Intermediate characters. In order to understand a particular character like Bao, which means newspaper, we may need to understand some earlier Kai type characters for newspapers, such as Ba, an earlier character for newspaper. In order to transition to the seal characters, which were earlier characters, we need to examine step by step those older forms of traditional characters, so it will become clear that modern traditional characters actually come from seal characters of the Han Dynasty. 
rare character components. Every compound traditional character is composed of components. Many of these component parts are not common modern characters. In the character Baal, the character for newspaper, we see on the right the component Fu, which is not a common character, but which is necessary to understand the meaning of the character. It will be necessary to examine a number of these character components in order to understand the logic of more common traditional characters. Simplified characters from rare traditional characters. It is said that all simplified characters were actually traditional characters. That is, characters that existed before the simplification. This is not entirely true, but many of the characters like G, which is the simplified form of G, can be found in the older dictionaries. So it is necessary to learn some rare traditional characters like G, which were traditional characters, but maybe not common traditional characters. Modern printed characters have been in common use for about 1800 years. Modern printed characters are derived from characters used during the Qin and Han dynasties, called seal characters. All in all, I now analyze about 15,000 simplified characters, traditional characters, transitional characters, and component characters. Half of them may not be common modern characters, but they are necessary if you really want to understand the origins of modern Chinese. But to understand the modern traditional characters, we need to look at the seal characters. Seal characters. Qin Han characters. 221 BC to 200 AD. Zhuang Tianzi. In 221 BC, Qin Shi Huang came to power and declared that the proliferation of Chinese characters had become too complicated. He assigned his prime minister Li Si to make a standard set of official characters. He also declared that all of the old documents should be destroyed. This unification and 2,200 years of history means that very few written artifacts survive from before 221 BC. The characters of the Eastern Han are well known and understood thanks to a dictionary by Shu Shen called the Shouwen Jianzi, which he wrote in about 147 AD. I will usually refer to this dictionary as the Shouwen. Our earliest copy of the Shouwen dates to the Song Dynasty. The Shu brothers, Shu Xuan, 916 to 991 AD, and Shu Kai, 920 to 974 AD, in 986 published the Shouwen Jiezi, Xi Chuan. But we think this version is a fairly accurate account of the original and of the time. This style of characters lasted until about 200 AD, but have been used continually for some official documents and for artistic documents and for official seals, thus the name seal characters. The proper name should be Qin Han characters or characters of the Qin and Han dynasty. In my research, I use several sources for Qin Han characters. The Shouwen is like the Rosetta Stone of Chinese. Without it, it would have been almost impossible to decipher the text of the Zhou and Shang dynasties. It is also apparent that Shu Shen had little or no access to texts before 221 BC. 
When we compare his description to earlier archaeological artifacts, we find many, perhaps 30% of the descriptions have some degree of error ranging from minor to just plain wrong. Xu Shen is still a great man, the Galileo of Chinese etymology. Is it an etymology dictionary? It does not really discuss etymology. It is more like a spelling book that tells you the components and if they are phonetic or not. But it does not discuss the logic of why they are combined that way. So it is not really an etymology dictionary, but has valuable structural information and has a lot of alternate characters and characters which Xu Shen considered to be more ancient. So it has a lot of etymological information. Is it a dictionary? It is not a dictionary in the usual sense. The so-called explanations are little more than reminders of what the character means. A particular kind of plant may just be described by the word a plant, not by any useful description. Some characters are described by characters that sound the same, only telling you how the character is supposed to be pronounced, but not what it actually meant. It is clear that Xu Shen had little or no access to Zhou Dynasty characters, and his guesses of the etymology are frequently wrong including the things he thinks are phonetics. About 23% of modern characters have been invented since Xu Shen's dictionary. Although he may frequently be wrong, we need to remember that he was speaking from his understanding of the characters as they were 2,000 years ago. So his opinion should be considered and evidence given before discarding his opinion. If he thinks something is a phonetic, he must have had some reason for thinking so. If he gives an explanation, we must consider why he thought it was this way. Liu Xu Tong is a dictionary of alternate and extra seal characters that show about 48,000 seal characters and alternates that were collected from the Qin to the Ming Dynasty. It is very useful for etymology showing many characters that cannot be found in the show one, and they give insight into the possible origins of bronze and oracle characters. There are also a lot of artistic forms. For how characters were written before the Qin Dynasty, we have no existing dictionaries, and we have to resort to the study of archaeological artifacts. Bronze characters, Zhou Dynasty characters, 1122 BC to 221 BC, Jin Wen. Historical dictionaries in the form of books go back to the Qin Han Dynasty. Before that, we have to rely on archaeological evidence. Actually, the Zhou Dynasty ended in 255 BC, but the seal characters were not standardized until after 221 BC. From the beginning of the Zhou Dynasty, Zhou Chao, to the Qin Shi Huang unification, people would have written on bamboo strips, but because of the Qin Shi Huang destruction of books and more than 2,000 years of time, we have very few samples from bamboo strips. What we have are several thousand cast bronze articles with inscriptions about major events. We have excavated many of these objects, and this is all we know about how Zhou Dynasty Chinese actually wrote characters. We call these bronze characters but we could just as well call them Zhou characters because they cover most of the Zhou dynasty. The peculiarities of the bronze characters are 1. The comparatively primitive bronze casting technology of that time 
means that we cannot depend on the characters to be as accurate as if they were from the bamboo strips. They have casting flaws. Two, they have undergone two or 3,000 years of corrosion and further deteriorates their condition. Three, some of these objects were excavated recently and thus we can depend on their authenticity. Others have been found for hundreds of years and may be forgeries. The making of forgeries was particularly prominent during the Tang Dynasty, about 600 AD to 900 AD. 4. The inscriptions range from single characters on coins to several hundred characters on some large bronze objects. One of the main modern references is the Jingwen Bian, which covers about 4,000 objects. 24,223 different sample characters in all, representing about 4,000 different characters. More recently, we have the Xin Jingwen Bian. 5. Since these inscriptions mainly commemorated important events, we may not find some of the everyday characters that were in actual use. 6. These few artifacts range all over China and over a thousand year period. This is good in the fact that it gives us a large range of samples, but it is limited in that we cannot get an extensive sample of any one place or time. Xu Shen describes a type of characters called greater seal characters. These were a type of characters that were supposed to be used during the Zhou Dynasty. They are often quite different from the real characters that we find on bronze. Oracle Characters Xiang Dynasty 1766 BC to 1122 BC Oracle bones were only discovered in 1895. When we say oracle bones, we mean either the front plates, plastrons of turtle shells, or the shoulder bones, scapula of oxen. The people of the Shang Dynasty would scratch inscriptions on the bones or shells with a sharp object and then see how the bones or shells cracked when exposed to fire. In this way, they would attempt to cast fortunes. The uneducated Chinese of the 19th century who first found these bones thought they were dragon bones and ground them up for traditional medicine. The writing was obviously not readable to them. We have been studying these bones and trying to put them together now for a hundred years. We can understand somewhat over half of the character samples, which means we can understand around 95% of the text. Peculiarities of oracle characters are 1. Almost all of the oracle bones and turtle plastrons all come from one excavation site. If it were not for this one site, we would have no direct proof that the Shang Dynasty Chinese were really literate. The shells cover a period of about 300 years from 1200 BC to about 1000 BC. The advantage of this is that we have a small number of writers, all from one place, and extending over a relatively long period of time. This gives us a kind of average we can at least talk about how the people of that time and that place wrote. 2. The pieces are a real mess. By some estimates, a total of 400,000 pieces were found. Several thousand plastrons and bones have been reconstructed, and several tens of thousands of sentences have been studied. I have compiled a database of 31,876 sample characters 
that represent about 4,000 different characters, of which we think we understand somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 of these characters. 3. From the analysis of characters like Dian, which means dictionary, we believe that the usual writing medium of the time was bamboo strips. The first actual examples of bamboo strips we have date back to around 400 BC. So, by that time, we already have almost a thousand years of Chinese for which we have proof that writing exists, but for which there is not one single bamboo strip. 4. The characters of 1200 BC have already undergone a huge degree of abstraction. When we are told what they represent and how they are supposed to be, it seems in most cases fairly obvious. Unlike Egyptian hieroglyphics, it is not obvious to the casual observer what most of the characters represent. This is an indication that the writing system had already been around for a long time, hundreds of years, perhaps even thousands of years. 5. The purpose of the oracle bones was to cast fortunes. There was a lot of writing done here, but it was like the vocabulary you might find in a horoscope. We can estimate that they probably had many characters for more everyday common things that never appeared in the oracle bones. We might be able to extract 5,000 characters from the oracle bones, but there were probably twice that many characters used at the time. 6. The characters were scratched into bone and shell with a sharp object, so one difficulty is to determine what the ordinary character really looked like. For example, what would be a circle often gets translated to a square when scratched into a bone. Changjia It is believed that spoken language developed a little at a time. A language with 10 words is more useful than a language with no words. A hundred words are better, and so on. With written language, on the other hand, a written system that cannot represent at least the majority of spoken language is virtually useless. Imagine a written language that can only represent half of the concepts you can talk about. Why bother to learn it? The traditional story says that a man named Changjia invented the writing system around 3000 BC. You can only say so much with a painting and tokens. I think that an innovative artist found that he might represent words with basic symbols and phonetic parts. He, and probably a group of people, were commissioned to invent and learn a writing system for practical purposes. In short, I think Changjia was a real person. Thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone who helped me. Valuable comments are always welcome.